join us. Are you guys having fun yet? Okay, our last comic of the night is making his third appearance on this very show. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Landau. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. It's a mohawk. Um, it's good to be here in New York. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, originally. Thank you. Yeah. Really? Tourism's down. The best thing about being from Detroit, we have our own anthem, which is Don't Stop Believing" by Journey. So anytime you're in a bar, a restaurant, or Tiger's game, you hear the line, just a city boy, everybody stops to go. Born and raised in South Detroit, but the very next line to that song is he took the midnight train going anywhere. <laughs> that means anywhere on earth other than Detroit. How's that for hometown pride? Hey, where's this train going? Who gives a shit? It's midnight in Detroit. Two tickets that way, please. Leave the baby, he can't keep up. We'll make a new one when we get anywhere. Should we sell the house? I don't really need $11. It's interesting, Detroit, to help revitalize the community, hipsters will move like next door to crack houses and do a thing called urban farming where they plant fruits and vegetables. And then you see them on the news and they're like, they robbed us and cut our faces open as a warning. <laughs> yeah, that's because you're fucking with their business. You know what people want to buy way more than fruits and vegetables? Crack. <laughs> Nobody's ever sucked dick for an orange. That's never happened. <laughs> I live in Metro Detroit uh, with my wife, who just gave birth to our first child, which is really awesome. Yeah, it's great. And I'm a, I'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict, and now that we have a kid, people have questions. Like, my other, my, the other day, my buddy's like, well, like, what if you caught your kid smoking weed? That's a harmless drug. What if you caught him smoking weed? I'm like, well, seeing as he's a baby, I'd be impressed. I'm like, wow, did you roll that yourself? I thought you'd walk first. I think if my kid smokes weed, by the time he's old enough, it's just gonna be legal. And remember how your dad used to tell you, like, I used to walk 30 miles to school, up and down hill in cardboard shoes. I was damn lucky to have. I would just do that shit to my kid with weed. I'd be like, oh yeah, did you go to the store to get your pot again? You got it easy. Back in my day, you used to have to page your drug dealer, and sometimes they wouldn't get back to you. So then you'd have to start hitting up other people's drug dealers. But they were dry, so you and your friends drove down to the shittiest neighborhood you've ever seen in your life and waited for somebody to go, Kako, Kako. <laughs> and you'd go, Hoo hoo, hoo hoo, hoo hoo. And they'd run out and sell you a dime bag of mainly stems and seeds, possibly some fish food. You and your friends would roll up a doobie and get headaches, but you know what? You were goddamn lucky to have it, son. <laughs> what I always loved about Dope Streets was just cacao, like a cop was gonna go, you know, I thought there was a drug deal going on over there. <laughs> Clearly just a falcon talking to an owl. Falcons aren't indigenous this area. Owl, very wise bird, probably helping him back to his natural habitat. I think in 10 years, pot's gonna be legal and peanuts won't be. I really do. I think, I think you're gonna have to meet a dude in an alley to get a couple grams of Jif. I'm not a cop, like, all right, I got creamy, but for extra 20, I got that chunk, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit straight nut. I got, I got arrested 13 times, which sounds less severe if you say Baker's dozen. 
the most I ever drank was an interesting time. It did end in an arrest. I was at a house party when I was 17, and my friend goes, you should bong a fifth. And I was like, you're right. <laughs> so my friend Nick held out a beer bong while my friend Anthony poured in a fifth of absolute vodka. Yeah, then my friend Jimmy goes, dude, that's fucking stupid, and pours in some Sprite, and he goes, now you're good. <laughs> And I bonged a fifth. Now, I don't know if you know what happens when you bong a fifth. I will tell you. You tap dance for about four minutes. You tell your girlfriend who you love more than life itself that she has orangutan titties. You light a cigarette by the filter and you pass out face first into a glass table. The next day, the cops show up and you're still sleeping there. The parents have come home and called the police. They wake you up and they know you. And they look at me, they're like, hey, uh, here's the deal, Dave. We're gonna call your parents and send you to rehab or you're going to jail, what's your pick? And I was like, we should do rehab, that'd be good. <laughs> so they handcuff me to the back of an ambulance and they drive me to a rehab. But on the way there, they find out there's no room in the rehab. So I have to be detoured to a mental hospital. So I get to the mental hospital, and I meet my counselor, and he takes me to meet my roommate, like camp. <laughs> so we walk down to this room. There's just this kid sitting there with this blank stare. And the counselor goes, Dave, this is Reese. Reese, Dave, get to know each other. You're roommates. He goes, what are you in for? I'm an alcoholic? What about you? I'm a werewolf. You don't really look like a werewolf. Yeah, I'm not a werewolf right now. There's not a full moon. If there's a full moon, I morph into a werewolf and I attack people. I come close to killing them. I don't remember it, I black out. <laughs> Neat. All right, uh, hey, uh, I'm gonna need my own room. This guy thinks he's a werewolf. Yeah, he's not a werewolf. Everybody has a bunk mate, you're gonna stay here. He has teeth and shit, so yeah, you're not getting your own room. So about a week goes by, being in a mental hospital, it's not that bad, you get to wear pajamas, watch a lot of TV. But one night, I'm going to bed, and all of a sudden, from the next bunk, I hear, Good night, Reese. This dude stands up, rips his shirt off like Hulk Hogan, tears his pants off like they're breakaways, and just starts going, roar, roar, roar. And I'm like, help, fucking werewolf. There's a werewolf. Where? This kid lunges at me, butt naked. I grab the lamp to hit him with it, and it's fucking glued down. So I'm just going, help, help me, help. He's a werewolf, werewolf. This dude's trying to bite my face, and that's not even what bothered me. He was naked. So all I could feel was his cock slapping against my leg the entire time. I'm like, werewolf, help, werewolf, there's a werewolf. Two counselors bust in the door, see him naked on top of me, and I swear to God, one looks at the other one and goes, what do we, let him fuck? Like, what do we do? <laughs> like, we're not fucking, he's trying to kill me, help. He thinks a werewolf, help. They stab him in the ass with a syringe, and they drag him out of there. I never saw him again. They could have shot that kid. I don't even know what happened. But I stood up, I'm like, I do not want to be here. I'm supposed to be in rehab, I'm an alcoholic. I'm brooming with monsters. I got a werewolf mushroom dick print on my thigh. I want to go home to my family. No more roommates. No more. Fuck. So the next day, they introduce me to my new roommate. This kid walks in. He's like, Dave, this is Ryan. Ryan, Dave, get to know each other. Yeah, hi, Ryan. What's your problem? What's my, last night, I got attacked by a goddamn werewolf.
where was there a werewolf? And then I point in an empty bed and I go, he was just right there. <laughs> Neat. Hey, I'm going to need my own room, this guy. <laughs> and that's how they make crazy people. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>